the pi molecular orbitals of conjugated dienes and polyenes result from the overlap of adjacent p orbitals, two p orbitals in the case of second row elements, that are lined up in a sidearm fashion. And they're delocalized, and so we'll see lobes on really three or more atoms in all of these orbitals. In this video, we're going to survey the molecular orbitals of conjugated dienes and polyenes using a program to calculate them. So you won't be expected to draw molecular orbitals of conjugated polyenes from scratch. By no means. Those will be provided where needed. But we can use pretty simple computer programs to calculate these. And we're going to do this because the interpretation of pi molecular orbitals, particularly the frontier molecular orbitals, the highest occupied molecular orbital and lowest unoccupied molecular orbital, allows us to gain deep chemical insight into how conjugated systems more generally, not just dienes and polyenes, but all conjugated systems behave. So we're going to let the computer do the math for us and just interpret the results. Okay, let's start with the simplest pi bond containing molecule, which is ethylene, C2H4. If we look at ethylene, it's got a pi molecular orbital, pi bonding molecular orbital, and a pi antibonding or pi star molecular orbital. And these shapes should be pretty familiar from uh, your prior experience. What happens when we add another double bond to this and create butadiene? Well, let's add a couple of carbons. Now we've created a four atom conjugated system. Notice that each carbon is sp2 hybridized. This is by default. Hewlett takes care of all this automatically because it knows that the molecule needs to be fully conjugated. And as we've added two more carbons, two more p orbitals, we now have four pi molecular orbitals rather than two. At the lowest energy, we have no nodes at all. All of the p orbitals are lined up in phase. The highest occupied molecular orbital here has one node between carbons 2 and 3 right here, and the lowest unoccupied molecular orbital has two nodes. And we see this relatively familiar pattern of the number of nodes increasing as we go to higher pi molecular orbital energies. Another thing to point out here is this gap between the highest occupied and lowest unoccupied molecular orbitals. It shrinks as we add more atoms. Watch what happens if I go back to ethylene here briefly. Notice here that the homo-lumo gap is about two units on this scale, the gap between the highest occupied and lowest unoccupied molecular orbitals. But if I add two more carbons to get back to butadiene, now that gap is quite a bit smaller. It's right around one unit rather than two. And that trend is gonna continue as we add additional double bonds. So for example, if I add another double bond here to create hexatriene, 135 hexatriene. Now I have six pi molecular orbitals. I've got a smaller homo-lumo gap than 1,3-butadiene. And if I look again at the homo and lumo, I see I have one, two nodes in the homo and three nodes, one additional node in the lumo here. So these pi molecular orbitals follow patterns, but the thing to notice in general is that they're constructed from p molecular orbitals aligned in a side-on fashion. In Hewlett, we're looking down on the pi molecular orbitals from above. So for example, this red shaded circle on top is the top lobe of the p orbital, and the white shaded circle is the bottom lobe. But these are all p orbitals lined up in a side-on fashion. Nodes may show up between adjacent p orbitals, and generally as we go from the lowest energy pi molecular orbital to the highest, the number of nodes increases by one with each step. The lobe sizes may be something that's catching your attention. For example, we notice the lobes are larger in this lowest energy orbital in the internal carbons, at the internal carbons rather than the outer carbons. Don't worry about this too much. Um, it's going to become more important when we start throwing heteroatoms into the mix, which is going to happen later. For conjugated dienes and polyenes that are all carbon, hydrocarbons, this difference in lobe size is, is not a huge deal, not something we're going to worry about too much. Because we're going to focus so much on the frontier molecular orbitals, the HOMO and LUMO, I want to leave you with a little trick for drawing the HOMO and LUMO of a conjugated polyene from scratch. Now this only works for conjugated polyenes. That means hydrocarbons only, no heteroatoms in the conjugated system. And we need an even number of carbon atoms so that the structures 
Lewis structure has a pattern of alternating double and single bonds. As long as all these conditions hold, this little trick will, will work. Let's start with the HOMO trick. So the HOMO trick is that the HOMO resembles the Lewis structure of the molecule with all atoms neut neutral, that dominant standard Lewis structure with alternating double and single bonds. And when we say resembles, we mean there's constructive overlap everywhere we see a double bond in the Lewis structure. So for example, for 1,3-butadiene, we see a double bond here, and notice there's constructive overlap between the p orbitals here. We see a double bond here, and there's constructive overlap between the p orbitals here. And where we see a single bond, there is a node in the orbital. So the HOMO looks like this, and this holds regardless of the length of the pi system. For example, if we look at 1,3,5-hexatriene and consider the HOMO of this molecule, well, it again has constructive overlap everywhere we see a double bond and a node everywhere we see a single bond. And this is the highest occupied molecular orbital only. Now, if you want to verify this trick, I encourage you to dig into Hewlett's and throw these molecules in and examine their homos just to verify. Or you can rewind the video and take a look at the homos that we looked at earlier. They do fit this pattern. And regardless of the length of the pi system, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, as long as it's a conjugated polyene or diene or alkene, this will hold. The LUMOs also follow a pattern. It's a little bit more complicated to get a handle on, but it will make sense, particularly once we compare it to the HOMO. So the LUMO resembles what we might call an alpha-omega diradical structure. We'll draw that out in a second, but I want to show the orbitals first. So for 1,3-butadiene, we have now destructive interference, or a node where we see each double bond, and constructive interference in the middle. And this trend sort of continues with the terminal atoms, the alpha and omega atoms, if you will, having lobes that are sort of by themselves, and then we have constructive interference for adjacent lobes alternating up, down, up, down, or shaded, unshaded, shaded, unshaded, etc. And a similar pattern holds in 135-hexatriene. We have these lone p orbitals on the terminal atoms, and we have constructive interference here, constructive interference or overlap here, and nodes where we see the double bonds in the Lewis structure. So one way to think about this is we just have a node where there's each double bond in the LUMO. That works for two carbons, four carbons, six carbons, any length of carbons. Another way to think about this is it's, it's sort of like the resonance structure where we have an unpaired or, or radical electron on the end of the pi system. So we have a sort of a di-radical structure with radical electrons by themselves, and we've got double bonds here. So you can see in this resonance form where we have double bonds, there is constructive overlap, and where we go from a radical to a double bond or where there's a single bond, we now have a node. So this is another way to think about the LUMOs of conjugated polyenes.